The Secrets of the Kingdom Mission was a video where I discussed cinematography, set design, and subliminal messaging. However, I left out many other clues, additional lore not mentioned. Angel Heart is notorious for its mysteries. It's near impossible to decipher them all on first viewing. Who is Johnny Favorite? Where is Johnny Favorite? Who is the woman in black? Was Harry supposed to show up at Margaret Cruzmark's place at 1.30 or 4.30? What makes up a two sisters cocktail? And no, I don't know the poem. Mysteries have stories played out in front of us. Sometimes there are other stories, obscured, riddled with more questions than answers. You may find them in the script, the source material novel, but that doesn't help much when you're watching on the big screen or on your phone. The Kingdom Mission is one of many examples of a story behind the story we'll discuss here. As always, the alternative theories mentioned within may cause anxiety, rage, and disbelief. But that's why you're here, I hope. Kindly consider leaving a like, share, or subscribe if you enjoy this video. Pastor John would approve. Well, Mr. Weissack, could you give me a few more details? Uh-huh. Okay. No, I know the place. Have you wondered why Cypher chose to meet Harry Angel for the first time in Pastor John's mission? Did it seem odd that Cypher and his attorney sidekick, Weinsap, invited themselves to the pastor's inner sanctum? Cypher took the throne and helped himself to some wine, as if it was his mission. Thrones are for royalty, after all. In the source material novel, Falling Angel by William Yortsberg, Angel first meets Cypher in a New York restaurant and without wine sap. The film gives us this later in an Italian cafe, soon after Dr. Fowler's demise. Why did Alan Parker chose to go with the mission? As a matter of storytelling, the answer to why is rather straightforward. It sets up the themes of religion. There is incongruity with the business-like formality upstairs, while the audacious sermon occurs downstairs. Parker's depiction of religion in Angel Heart comes with rituals, routines, and performances. Parker shoehorns images of a lady in black, cleaning up a messed up wall with help of a porcelain bowl. Winesap gives a terse explanation of this tragedy, and it's never mentioned again. However, the ladies in black and the bowls do make their reappearances. They were more important than the poor guy carried away. Yortsburg does mention a Harlem church, the New Temple of Hope, in his book. It is run by a Reverend Love. It comes in the middle of the novel and not the beginning. While Harry Angel did not meet person to person with Cypher in the temple, Harry did witness a performance there, given by Cypher under a pseudonym, L. Cipher. Cipher is introduced by the Reverend as his teacher and a very wise man of another faith. Cipher, a.k.a. Cipher, and the Reverend are associates. And Pastor John's quip about deserving a Rolls Royce And you want to give to me? Then I should be in a Rolls Royce! is likely a reference back to the novel, where Reverend Love chauffeured El Cipher around in his roles. But back to the film. New Temple of Hope becomes the kingdom mission. Reverend Love is now Pastor John, who wishes for a Rolls but rides around on a carried chair. What is inferred in the film and mentioned in a working draft of the script, that Pastor John is a business associate of Cypher's, as originally to be explained by Winesap. He and Cypher were guests of the pastor. So how does Pastor John benefit from Cypher's help? Money, of course. As explained by an in-script character, Siley, a newspaper vendor removed from the film, later explains to Harry that the pastor bought a hotel in Jersey in cash. He's swimming in it. What does Cypher get in return? Pastor John's soul, of course. The film tells its lore more abstractly. The pastor's true spiritual beliefs tucked in a hiding place. On first viewing, it may be interpreted as hypocrisy, putting up a false face. However, if you start linking John with making deals with the devil, we understand more Lucifer's ability to persuade others to sell their faith 
for the material, whether it's money or your favorite taxidermy. You must want this Johnny pretty bad, huh? I don't like messy accounts. Why does Harry Angel make a second trip to the Kingdom mission? Angel was all but bribed to stick with the investigation, and one scene later, he's off doing something else. The kicker here was he wasn't going to find Johnny Favorite there. He would find nothing to help with his investigation. Angel's visit to the Kingdom mission is a story told exclusively visually. In fact, there are many stories, each without a single word of exposition made inside. From scene to scene, we are given a preview of either the future or the past. Parker cleverly inserts a montage here of experiences, of clues seen later in waking dreams. All are conscious premonitions of what we'll see again in Angel's head. We can assume he was lured back because the bloodied wall triggered his curiosity. However, he sticks around helping himself to Pastor John's most sacred throne room. Then he makes his way to the pulpit, sees a vision of the lady in black before heavies jump him. If we take these one by one, we get an example of a translucent window in a porcelain bowl each associated with the final sacrifice. Harry is staring at an empty chair perched on a stage. This is seen later as an electric chair in another vision. Angel later approaches the lady in black, which may be an apparition or an oblivious follower. Let's not forget other lores, including that voodoo cabinet. This does at least two things intermingles paganism or the occult in a place where you'd expect to see it the least. It also replaces Winesap's scripted explanation of the pastor's association with Cypher that will be re-examined in an epiphany, not that one, after Cypher's final reveal. Looking into the working draft of the script offers no insight. Harry's conversation with Cypher in the cafe is there, the visit to the Kingdom mission does follow, but Harry just shows up, like the film. There is no written explanation of why. He visits the room, now tied clean. Harry takes a look at the armchair pulpit. Instead of a cabinet, there are primitive paintings with themes of the occult he didn't notice on his first visit. Harry's final experience inside the mission was his encounter with the Lady in Black and the heavies. I speculate there is one other reason for the repeat visit, and that inspiration comes from the source material. Angel went back to investigate Cypher, beginning with his known origins. When you eat boiled eggs like this, you're inviting questions. The novel had Angel shift his efforts from digging up Favor's history to Cypher's day-to-day -day activities. In the film, Angel's suspicion of Cypher comes out in the open, later, where they meet in a church in New Orleans, and Harry comes out and asks, rather obscenely, Who are you? Cypher didn't answer. An unfortunate husband of one of Pastor John's flock took a gun to his head. Most unpleasant. Now we come to the most outrageous example of lunacy inside the Kingdom mission. For first time viewing, we may think the story's plot is first told to us upstairs, in the inner sanctum between Angel, Cypher, and Winesap. It's an easy assumption, because that is where the exposition, all the talking, happens. However, stories can be told by exposition, visually, or both. Whether we noticed or not, there was a story told visually before Harry met Cypher. Technically, it had started with Winesap, outside the bloodied room. What were the visuals? The grieving woman, the sermon, the wall. On the surface, the grieving woman sets up unsettling feelings and distress. It's the first example of overt emotions and reflects the tone of the film. For those who've watched Angel Heart many times, take notice we are never told ahead of time Angel was headed for a church. He arrives in Harlem, and bam, 
unhappy people holding hands. Inside comes the second visual, the sermon. Once again, the initial point this makes establishes where Harry is. He's inside a place that can be described as a church, a mission, or theater, depending on your point of view. The sermon is over the top, but in some ways more subtle than others. The theme of practicing spirituality begins here. So what have we learned so far? The grieving woman just stepped outside the building. Do we associate her with the mission we didn't know about yet? Well, your brain does. The third visual tells an awful backstory about the kingdom mission. That's the wall of splattered blood. The theme of the woman in black is not yet established. This is foreshadowing without realizing it. The wall, the cleaning, the bowl, and the woman return later, and more often. For first time viewing, it's to shock the audience, either to see a horrible image in a church, or how casual everybody seems to act about it. It's incongruity. It's a contradiction. It's one thing that doesn't belong with the other. There is a story here. Winesap in the film tells some of it. A husband of one of Pastor John's flock took his life and was not a follower of the pastor's. But no, never mind, and everyone goes on their merry ways. If we revisit the images in chronological order as seen in the film, it appears as three different stories. Let's swap the images in chronological order in the film universe, and we see a different story. Husband splatters his blood on the wall. The widow visits the mission inside. They go ahead with the sermon anyway. This meant they brought in the lady in mourning while part of her husband's remains were being scrubbed off the wall. No sooner she stepped out the door, Pastor John began his money-grabbing stage show. This place is nuts. I wouldn't be surprised if she was pushed out. If you're wondering why the husband would be driven to do such a thing, you're only going to find the answer in the script. Winesap explains to Harry that Pastor John expects his flock to practice abstinence. Mind-blowing. This was the Kingdom Mission, a place where you can worship glory or money. It's where anyone can make a deal with the devil if you say the right words. You can visit anytime, but you just can't stay. This is Mr. G of Synergy saying, you can buy a hotel, but that doesn't mean you get the car. Check out other videos on the channel. Thanks for watching.